All right, folks. I'm gonna welcome you to this quick video. Talk about a little incident that happened to me. I guess over a week ago now, almost two weeks ago. And damn, <clears throat> felt like I almost bought the farm. It was almost the almost the end of my road. But what happened, it's, before I tell you the story, it's, it's one of those things where, I don't know, what's the name of that movie, Final Destination, where like, all those circumstances happen and people die and it's, I think it's called Final Destination, I can't remember. But that's kind of what I thought about after this shit happened. <clears throat> so basically, this spot we're at, there was a light to burn out and I'll give you a, I'll give you a look at the light here it's this dude right here this son bitch right here uh, almost killed me but there's there's two of these hanging by the pool and this one right here uh, was burnt out and so you know I'd notice that you know if the lights are on at night the, the, the light on the right is on this one's off what do you figure you figure it's a fucking uh, it's a uh, light bulb is burnt out. And, you know, I'm thinking, all right, well, sooner or later you got to change the light bulb. So I'm swimming in the pool. And I look over and I realize that, hold on, let me, let me get it turned up. See, this, this is the top right here. So this little cap right here was laying on the ground. Now this is this is side up, so obviously I don't know a goddamn pigeon or something had knocked this cap over. I don't know how it came off, and it's laying it's laying over there on the ground. And so I'm taking a look at it, and I'm like, well, goddamn it, fucking rain getting in there. Now to to change this light bulb, you got to take off these bolts. There's like three bolts right here. So it's, it's, it's not merely just going up there and un unscrewing the old bub and screwing the new one in. That's why I was like, you know, that's a chore, do it later. I'm procrastinating about it. But when I saw this little cap off the top of that son of a bitch, I said, well, it's gonna, you know, if it rains, it's gonna get water in there. Let me put that cap on real, real quick. So my dumb ass, I'm not thinking, well, I was thinking and I wasn't. If you if you go to change a light bulb, what do you do? You usually just make sure the, the switch is off. Unscrew the bulb, screw it back in. I mean maybe some of you go to the breaker and cut the breaker off, but I say the average person, if you're just gonna change a damn simple light bulb, it's just unscrew it, and insert the new one, screw it back in. So I look up, you know, the light on the right is out, so it indicates that the switch is off. So my dumb ass just jumps up out of the pool, reaches down, soaking wet. I grab this son of a bitch right here. And then this thing is high enough, and this is what saved me and what didn't. When I take this thing right here and I slide that son of a bitch up right there, I'm on my tiptoes. And as soon as I made contact with this son of a bitch right here, I rode 220, 240 volts, whatever it is. You know, I'm over in Southeast Asia right now, so it's not 110, it's, it's 220. And as soon as I touch that, and I just try to, try to give you a visual, I mean, I'm up on my tiptoes, so I can barely reach it. So as I slide that son of a bitch up there, and went like, you know, I mean, the minute I touched it, I knew I was in trouble. Uh, 220 bolts, soaking wet, no shoes on, just fucking perfect ground. I was riding 220 bolts and there wasn't nothing I could do about it. And the fact that I was I was up on my damn tiptoes, you know, I had like a perfect lean almost. And so when when it when it goddamn bit me and I started riding the lightning, it just stiffened me up like a goddamn two by four. I couldn't move, 
I couldn't do nothing. I just, I knew I was in trouble. Well, the two by four did a slow, you know, slowly out of balance and just slowly started coming over until, uh, until I fell over and, you know, lost contact with it. And then I just, it fucking laid me out on the ground. I was, I was on the fucking ground like a baby crawling. So, uh, folks, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, it, I thought that was the end. I couldn't do nothing. I was perfectly grounded. I mean, I, it just couldn't move. It just basically put me in two by four mood. But luckily, I wasn't perfectly up like that. Luckily, I was leaning a little bit, and then just slowly gravity, you know, took me out of there. And that's the only thing that saved me. And you know, I fucking hit the ground, and I crawled over to uh, to the damn door, started beating on the door, calling for the old lady, because my my heart was fucking fluttering. And you know, to be honest, since that incident has happened it still feels like it's it's fluttering a little bit so anyhow i crawled my old ass over to the door started beating on the door and she came out and of course i'm fucking laying there and folks folks i just laid there for a while i i didn't know what was going to happen because my heart was just uh was fluttering and you know after a few days my, my whole damn body was sore, especially this right side of my body from that right arm all the way down to my goddamn uh, right foot. It felt like I'd been in a fight, but I hadn't. So that's, that's what happened. And after it's over, you know, I turn around and I'm staring at that motherfucker like the goddamn switch is off. And I ain't no electrician, if you ain't figured that out by now uh, from some previous videos. I'm not an electrician. I know enough about wiring to be dangerous to myself. You know, usually like back when I was working construction, yeah, I can pull wire, I can wire shit up, but when you, you throw the power to it, that's when the, the electrician on the job comes over and makes sure you did the shit right and he takes over the dangerous part. Because why? Because the motherfucker knows what he's doing. So finally, I'm taking a look at this, and I go back, I check the switch, switch is off. So finally, I get my buddy over here, and he puts a meter on it, because I don't have a fucking meter. So he brings a meter, he puts a meter on the, on the light on the right, no current. He puts a meter <clears throat> to the light on the left, and that motherfucker is energized. You know, just the whole, this thing is metal, aluminum, whatever it is. But this whole thing is energized. <clears throat> so we're like, what the fuck's going on? So we come, we pull the breaker, and you know, check it again, make sure there's no current to it. And we start dismantling this thing and pull it off. And when we pull this thing off the wall, basically over time, you know, just the sun beating down on this dude. Um, one of the wires had <clears throat> popped loose and so I'm not sure which one it was but one of the wires had popped loose and it was just making contact with the metal and it was energizing the whole thing and I still don't really understand why it had power when the switch was off but my old man said it was back fed or something hell you electricians know what the fuck it was <clears throat> but one of these wires was touching the metal of this light, so the whole goddamn thing was energized, and it's nobody's fault. I mean, you just, you know, that light's probably been there 15 years, <clears throat> and through the sunlight beating down on it, and um, you know, there's a little bit of corrosion in there. The damn wire just popped loose, and just, uh, you know, just the freak way it popped back on there, it energized this thing. Now, the other factor was. Again, this is the top. This whole son of a bitch right here was filled with water. When we took that thing off and turned it upside down, we poured uh, probably a goddamn gallon of water out of this son of a bitch. It was just chock full of water because something had knocked the lid off the top. 
So when, when my dumbass grabbed a hold of it, made contact, you had had the wire here. The whole thing was filled with water. I was soaking wet from head to toe, from just getting out of the swimming pool. No shoes, perfect fucking ground. And it was just a perfect storm. And it cost me uh, five seconds of pain. And you know the only relevance of my location being in Southeast Asia, you know, compared to the states. Again, over there it's 110. Here it's you know, what 220. 220 volts, 240 volts, whatever it is, it's twice as much. And I'm gonna tell you right now, <clears throat> that wasn't no fun. It wasn't no fun, there wasn't nothing I could do. The only thing that saved my ass was gravity and a slight goddamn lean. Now, I look back and I said, you know, if I had got a ladder, and got over in that son of a gun. Now, if it's a wood ladder or fiberglass, obviously, I'd have been okay. But if I'd have gotten an aluminum ladder and got up there to where it was at, you know, and really got a hold of it, I might not, I, I might have had a grip on it. I might not have uh, been able to let go of that son of a bitch. So the, the irony of it is, the fact that I did something stupid, I think is what saved me from greater, you know, fucking injury. Anyhow, that's that's what happened to me, and you know I didn't wake up that day. Let's talk about the philosophy of it. I didn't wake up that morning thinking that I was gonna get goddamn electrocuted. I was merely swimming in a fucking swimming pool, enjoying a little bit of sun sunlight while the baby was sleeping. I was just fucking chilling by myself, just uh, just doing a little reflection. Next thing you know, I'm on the fucking ground after riding the lightning. I mean, that's how fucking fast, you know, things in life can come at you. So I certainly didn't plan that. <laughs> but I think the fact that I was reckless about it, you know, only got me five seconds and and, and, and just the, the way it was set up. I was on the ground and I was okay. Now again, I, I still feel like I got this little flutter going on <clears throat> and what I did the next day, day after. And I did a quick video on it. I'll post that right after this one. I just went to the track, went for a run, and function checked this bitch, and I just figured that if, uh, you know, if I could go around that track in this hot sun, I'd probably live. But... I don't know, folks. I just thought I'd share that with you. And, and I guess what, what the lesson is, the learning lesson in this, is that when you go to change a light bulb, don't assume that it's the light that's burnt out. You better assume on the, uh, the side of caution and say, well, is that light bulb burnt out? Or B did the hot wire come loose <clears throat> inside that little casing which most of the time is metal right did that hot wire come loose and is that little housing energized if you make the assumption that the light bulb is burnt out and you reach up in there and touch that fucking metal housing like I did and it's a loose wire you're gonna fucking ride the lightning you could potentially ride the lightning. Let's just put it that way. All right, so in the future, even when I go to change a fucking light bulb, I want to throw the breaker. I want to make damn sure that it's the light bulb that's burnt out and not some goddamn wire that popped loose. That's going to cause me to ride the lightning over stupidity. And the second thing I'm not going to do is get straight out of a fucking swimming pool and go touch a goddamn light fixture. I don't recommend that either. So you know folks like next day, next day it's like I had a new lease on life. 
every now and then you need little reminders like that to remind you how fucking precious life is. Because out of all the crazy shit I've done in my life, all the times that I guess I should have died, and you know, a few times where I almost died, I was like, this is not the way I want to fucking go out. You mean to tell me I'm gonna fucking live this life and then go out by getting shocked by a fucking pool light? And it's not even a pool light, it's a light by the pool. That, that, that's, that's the end of my fucking legacy, is to get, get goddamn electrocuted. I ain't going out like that. I ain't going out like that, my friends. I thought I was about to go out like that when I was riding that shit. But I'm not going out like that. So anyhow, that's what happened to me. Maybe this is just rambling. But there are some lessons here. <clears throat> yeah, I sort of certainly learned my lesson. <clears throat> Damn. I don't want to do that shit again. I don't want to play that game again. Hopefully there's nothing... Long term wrong with my heart, but it does. It just felt feels like a little flutter, like I don't know, just like it's uh, something ain't right. But I'm still fucking ticking, and I'm going full force. So we'll see. But anyhow, if I'm uh, you know 40, what am 46 years old? If all of a sudden I drop dead of a goddamn heart attack. You know, in the next year or so, it the slow incident may have a factor on that. I don't know. All right, folks, I got one more video I got to cut, so I'm gonna talk about uh, choosing a helmet. It's another safety video. God damn, why am I back to doing safety videos? I'm a reckless dude, but I'm gonna do a safety video about which helmet you should choose if you're. Uh, if you're gonna ride a motorbike, and it, it applies anywhere, but you know a lot of guys come over to Southeast Asia, you end up, uh, you know, most most people don't don't end up buying a car over here. They just get a motorbike. And so in the next video coming up, I'm gonna talk about which helmet I think you should buy if you're going to uh, buy a motorcycle, motorbike, or really anywhere in the world. But if you're coming to Southeast Asia, I want you to take this to heart. So folks, I'll see you on this next little short video. <clears throat> I appreciate you joining me to listen to my my fucking near death experience here getting fucking electrocuted doing some stupid shit hey it's just part of life and so I'm glad to be alive it's a goddamn beautiful day I'm gonna finish my beer and just uh, appreciate the day Thanks for joining me. See you in the next video.